right, let's go ahead. All right, welcome everybody to the weekly Kubernetes community meeting. Uh, we have these meetings every Thursday and you should follow along on YouTube. Uh, I just subscribed to it so you can follow along what's going on. Um, we have a packed agenda today. We have a demo from uh, Janos Lenart. I hope I got that right. And then some release updates and then SIG updates from SIG testing um, and SIG UI with Dan and then some announcements. Uh, so with that, uh, Jan Janos, are you here yet? Yes, I am. Oh, there you are. Perfect. Um, go ahead and take it away. Okay. So um, in SIG UI, um, a good couple of months ago in like November, uh, Ian Lewis started working on uh, on PodExec uh, feature, which which, which would uh, bring some capability for us to um, to get a shell on the dashboard uh, interface. And uh, I picked up uh, his PR and developed it a bit further. So now now it actually works, and hopefully it will be uh, merged soon. So I will demo uh, that if everything works which uh, of course <laughs> is always a question. So I will share my screen in a, in a second. Okay, so just a quick confirmation. Can you see my, my Chrome? Yes? Okay. All set. So um, just go to your uh, pause list, select your favorite pod, and then uh, you have this option, execute shell. And if everything works, you should get a nice terminal. Now, this is hterm. You can you know, type everything, whatever you want. You have uh, copy paste. What you would expect from uh, hterm, it's colorful. Uh, it can uh, resize um, correctly. You will see that uh, it's correctly resized. Well, just you can click with the mouse. That works as well. Um, let's see what else. Um, you can start up as many as you want, so you can get more than one shell uh, running at the at the same time. Um, you can do very important things like uh, play Moonbuggy, that works fine as well. Um, let's see uh, what else. Now, previously, the problem with this uh, with this PR, I think the main problem was that. Um, that it was only working through WebSockets, which meant that uh, it didn't work through um, kubectl proxy, which is a major use case for uh, for the new users. Um, now this demo is also not using uh, kubectl proxy, um, but I have one running, and uh, it works through that as well. So this one is through the proxy now. What you are going to experience that it is a little bit jerkier as um, as you type. Uh, of course, it's difficult for you to perceive, but, but I can feel that there is maybe a, an extra 100 millisec delay for, for every key press. Not intolerable, but um, a bit annoying. That's because uh, instead of WebSockets, uh, if we are using uh, kubectl proxy, we are, uh, we are going uh, through uh, XHR and the stream, and that's just not as snappy as, um, as, cube, as, um, as the WebSockets uh, directly. Now the other feature uh, that we have is uh, we have a uh, attach. So not uh, not just exec, but we can also attach to the uh, to the output of uh, of bid one. So as as in uh, kubectl uh, attach. So this should be the live output from uh, from two of the pods that are serving my site. Where if everything works, yes. So now. If from this shell I say curl the YAML file for this particular uh, deployment, then we should see in one of them, yep, live that there was a get. So same as you would uh, expect from um, kubectl attach. Now we we can't yet send signals and and stuff that uh, I would also like to do, but uh, but that's um, also coming. Another interesting thing that I uh, I played with. Um, so from inside uh, from inside this um, container, I can, I can of course um, ex uh, access the the cluster itself with uh, with kubectl. I configured that one. Um, 
if anyone wants to try this uh, at the moment, this is not yet in the uh, in the dash any of the dashboard releases. Uh, but I built uh, a dashboard image uh, that's here, and this is this is a URL for the for the YAML file. If you want to if you want to try it, and that will give you a Kubernetes dashboard head deployment, and then you can uh, play with it a bit. Or if you want to chime in uh, on the PR, that should be somewhere here as well. Yeah, so that's 1939. Um, can you drop the link into the notes when you when we finish up your demo? Um, can you re repeat, please, your question? Sure. Could you drop those links into the notes when you yes. finish up? Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Yes, I, I will do. But uh, this is practically the uh, the end of my demo, so it's not. It wasn't a very long demo, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, try to answer. Uh, I have a quick question. Does does Tmux work? Uh, yes, yes, it does. I tested it, but uh, this uh, this pod doesn't have it. Uh, uh, well, this container doesn't have it installed, but I tested it and it works fine. Okay, great, thanks. So, um, one of the features that is uh, is missing at the point um, is that. We are simply uh, trying to start up bash. If there is no bash, we try with, uh, with SH. And if there is no SH, then that's the end of it. Uh, you are not going to get a shell. It's not yet possible for you to provide um, your own command. So like, I think it would be nice if there was a way to, to provide that you want tmux at, uh, but it's not possible at the moment. So you need to have a, you need to have a shell, uh, either bash or SH uh, installed in the container to uh, to use this, but um, that's that's also on the way. So. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Um, thank you. All right, moving on to the release updates. We've got one for one seven, one six five, and maybe one dot five. Um, who's here for one dot seven? Done. That would be you, Don. Okay. Can you help me share? I can, but you won't be able to see it. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. I can okay. see it here. So, so today is the our code space day. So we there's a pending PR. It's going to merge at uh, six o'clock and uh, Pacific Pacific time, six p.m. Pacific time, and uh, then we are going to restart the submit queue, all those kind of things, and. Uh, so there's no change on that plan so far. And I know there are some other things, like uh, some special, actual unexpected things happen. So that's kind of kind of plan. And uh, so yesterday, the uh, last couple of days, we stay very close on the submit queue. And uh, it has been, uh, yesterday is completely blocked by a test infrastructure issue. It's just we run out of the quota. And uh, then thanks to the NG pro team and the network team, this can spend a lot of time and on that one, they fix that issue. So the so now submit queue is working as expected, but very slow due to some really, really flaky build. The top two at least here, it is the uh, the cops AWS and the thanks Justin and debugging those kind of things. And he he he's he still is working on those those things. And another one is the Federation into ETCE and the engineer. I, I look the SIGA Federation group and they are looking at those kind of things. And the third one is because I don't have the space, I don't put the third one. Third one actually surprised to me. It is the node, E2E. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the fix should, uh, the the node E2E is passed against the five different image. So there's a two image that cause most of the problem when it is very old. The, all the to be deprecated container VM image, another one is core S image. So, so but the rest, rest us two, the uh, rest of three image actually work fine. There's no failure. And uh, so we are, we are going to decide if we, we, after this meeting, I'm going to review all the stickers and decide what's the next step. And the engineer is looking into why on those two images there's a failure. So we may disable certain tests on those things. So, so yesterday we supposed uh, schedule to cut uh, uh, first beta, beta zero for 1.7, and uh, and but it's delayed to today 
because there's a serious several critical bill and have the uh, very, very serious flicking and uh, in both the storage tests, delayed tests and the network reading tests. And uh, there's the pending PR to fix the storage related flakiness because that's the most is test related problem. So because the PR couldn't merge because just because because the flaky test in the separate queue is slow. Another one is real release blocker issue and caused by recent merged uh, uh, merged PR for the debugging and but that's really release blocker for the network. So 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 I just merged the. Uh, the, the PR to revoke that uh, Douglas uh, logging uh, PR and uh, network teams still look into those kind of things and they still have the flickiness caused by network uh, related issues so they are still looking at this one but we are going to after this meeting we are going to kick out to the beta zero and with some information knowing issues with those things and uh, so last things what I want to I think I sent the email to the community uh, Kubernetes dive about the up, upgrade policy. So, so which is which it is affect our upgrade test, uh, automated upgrade test. So we merged the uh, after that one. So we kind of the in the document side we are going to uh, clean up our document and remove those ambiguous uh, statement about the upgrade. But at the same time we're still doing the uh, cross to version upgrade test like the previous many release because we don't want to. Uh, do the dramatic change because we may have the customer don't know this one. It's our fault document problem before, so we are we need to understand what's going on. And then in this release, at least we have the more clear uh, things why you need a stepwise and give the customer warning. So we kick out those tests and uh, and the tests still have the problem and uh, having to look into the into charge those problems is maybe because our system or maybe it's the test info issue yet. So that's so far. Mini team is going to work on those things. That's uh, that's all my update. You talk One thing I wanted to point out about the submit queue is that there's currently no due date associated with the 1.7 milestone in GitHub, which means that pull requests that are in the submit queue for 1.7 do not take priority over other pull requests for no milestone or other milestones. So we may want to assign a due date if we want the 1.7 PRs to get higher priority. We are going to address that through the today's the code phrase PR. Um, what do you mean by that, Don? Oh, uh, we have the pending PR to 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 enforce the code phrase. Oh, actually, we could uh, yeah. set. The so I'm saying that if there's anything that's in the queue between now and 6 p.m. Pacific, it, the yeah. 1.7 PRs do not have any priority. Right. And if we set a due date, they will. Yes, we are going to fix this one. Thanks. Thank you. And I pulled up the last week, last week's notes as well, just to uh, mention again that the exception process is um, all deadlines for exceptions mm -hmm. are June 5th. 5th. All right, and the decisions for exceptions are going to be made at the burn down meeting on June 7th. Anyone have any other questions? Yeah, I just wanted to offer to help Dawn uh, regarding the Federation uh, tests causing problems. I, s I just had a look at the dashboard. I see they were all stable until yesterday and then something happened last night. Uh, we have an on-call engineer who's responsible for keeping that green. And unfortunately, they're in India at the moment, and that's closing in on midnight. Um, so if you want to, if you need any assistance during the course of today, um, either myself or uh, Nikhil or uh, Madhu should be able to help you. In fact, the, the latter two are in the office with you, so that might be the quickest way. Thanks, Clinton. Yes. I definitely need the, you guys' help on those things, yeah. All right. For those of us who don't have, uh, I know I keep bringing this up, but for those of us who aren't Kubernetes members and can't assign a milestone to our PR, what's the process we go to make that happen? Brian, what is the official process on assigning a milestone if we don't draw or care it, like if, if someone doesn't have permission to assign a label with a milestone? 
Do we have something in crowd for that? Uh, for adding the milestone to an issue? Crowd does not currently support adding milestones to issues. There's no bot command you can issue to make that happen. Okay. Um, I don't have a good answer for you right now. But if, uh, Aaron, was that you? It was Aaron. Uh, it was me. Okay, if you ping me, I will, I will, uh, I can add it for you. Is that a ping? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. That's, that's how great of an answer that was. <laughs> we, we, we talk about this one, treat the SIG lead. He's the SIG. What means, that's exactly what, yeah. yeah. I'm a SIG lead, but I'm not a member of the Kubernetes maintainers team. So I don't have right privileges to the Kubernetes repo. So I can't add labels except for those that the bot lets me add with bot commands. Uh, the other thing you can do for now is uh, we still have the Kubernetes PM team. You can apply for that, and we can add you, and then you'll have right access. Um, okay. I'm just trying to clarify, not just for me, right, but for people who are trying to get in, like, bug fixes as we start burning down. We're going to be changing the submit queue so it only accepts PRs that have the V17 milestone attached. So you should go... We're just, because I guess we're burning down, we should know who to go nag to get the milestone added, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. And we are making okay, progress yeah. against all of that. And for those looking for someone to ping, it's Garrett. That's fine. Order of 100 PRs. Mm. All right, so I've, I've left a little placeholder in the notes there. And you figure out what the process is, just fill it in. Unless you want me to put ping Garrett in there. Well, is it Garrett or would it be somebody on the release team? It's, uh, I, or I'm sorry, yeah. Garrett, I don't actually know if you have a role on the release team this time around. I don't officially have a role on the release team, uh, <laughs> but as a sick lead, I can write to, the, or I have write access to the repo, so I can, I can do that. And also the process actually, the new release, the process, we need to process, we propose actually the guard actor is the one uh, help to push that forward. So we think a daily pretty much. Yeah. Uh, you could also send a PR to Prout to add a command to this milestone. I hear you loud and clear on that, Brian. Many of us can. Thanks. All right, are we on to the 1.6 update? Anything else for 1.7? Okay, 1.65? Is that Don again or someone else? Uh, that's me, Anthony. Oh. Uh, so for 1.6, we do have a pretty big backlog of uh, cherry picks that didn't make it into 1.64 because that was a hot fix. So uh, I want to, I do want to release 1.65 uh, as early as possible, I'm thinking. Uh, for next week, but I still need to track down there are uh, blocking tests that are uh, broken. Uh, so if you submitted a cherry pick on one six branch, maybe take a look at the test grid uh, because if your PR looks suspicious, I'm coming for you. Okay, any questions on one six five? Any final comments? And do we have any point releases on one five? Coming? No, nothing so far. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. But we do have a couple of cherry pick to the 1.5 branch. Okay, but it... And it looks like there's no planning. I, I don't know. I okay. just point out there's a cherry pick. Yep. We, cherry will, pick. Uh, we will chase Marson on this one. Sure. Okay. All right, and with that, uh, that's it for the release. Uh, Note section, moving on to SIG updates. Um, Aaron, with uh, SIG testing, you're up first. Hooray, can everybody see me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I am basically just gonna be using the meeting notes as uh, something to ramble from. If I can find the meeting notes, I apologize. Give me just a second here. Okay, heck, let's even try sharing my screen. All right, okay, I'm Aaron Kirkenberger. I'm signed in as SIG testing because I now have a SIG testing Zoom account. Thank you so much, uh, Cameron and Sarah, for putting this together. I have this Zoom account so that our meetings can potentially run longer than 30 minutes. We hold them weekly. 
Tuesdays at uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern, I forget what that is, UTC. And we're gonna start um, recording them next week once I put together a new Zoom URI. So look for a pull request to the community repo, a change to the calendar invitation, an email out to SIG testing, and if you'd like, I can email SIG, or, or I can email uh, Kubernetes dev with the new thing. Um, okay, so. Uh, we basically use test infra, SIG so testing uses test infra as the repo for where most of the code that we are in charge of lives. Um, readme's, what are they for? Um, it turns out there's a variety of code in here that can be used to display test results. Uh, you've probably seen this, uh, I'm not sure that I have much to say here. Um, uh, somebody asked about uh, the data that's used to drive the variety of test dashboards that we have. Um, I'm not super familiar with this, but there's a directory called Kettle that basically is in charge of scraping and extracting all the test results out of GCS and turning those into either a local SQLite database or JSON files that you can use for BigQuery. Um, and then uh, as you may remember from my update on flakiness a couple weeks ago, uh, Eric's put together a couple of uh, big query things that are run periodically uh, to come up with, excuse me, a variety of metrics about jobs. So for example, if I wanna see what were the flakiest jobs this week, um, I can click on this JSON file. I can see that, yeah, the etcd3 uh, pull request job was definitely super flaky. Um, it was the second least consistent job for whatever reason our unit tests were even less consistent than that this past week. Um, anyway, I encourage you to check out that readme if you're curious about some of the things that we do. Uh, one of the coolest things since the last update I gave is that the triage board, um, which again just sort of tries to cluster together groups of failures, uh, now infers different SIGs uh, for some of these clusters of failures. I wish I could tell you what code is actually used to infer these SIGs, uh, but I'm not actually super familiar with that. So if anybody's really curious about that, we can come have a conversation about that in the SIG testing Slack channel in a little bit. Um, the idea is these are not supposed to be perfect. This was just sort of a best guess based on the data that we have so far. So for example, here are all the Federation uh, issues. Um, I can go search GitHub to see if we've filed an issue about that. Apparently we haven't, so we could do that. Um, I think at some point we were going to have the bot start automatically filing issues for clusters of failures, but we all know what happened the last time we had the bot auto file issues for test failures. Um, so to make this data a little better, we kind of have an interest in adding um, actual owners uh, to all of the various test jobs. Uh, so, sorry, jumping around a bunch. Um, in the jobs directory of test infra, there are a whole bunch of files. I'm interested in config.json um, because config.json now has a, fi a field called sig owners, which we can start parsing out and using this to actually more effectively triage like which SIGs are associated with which jobs. We could start using this to build SIG specific dashboards so they can uh, look at all of the jobs that they care about. Um, in the meantime, I believe SIG CLI has a demonstration of how you can create a dashboard that only your SIG cares about, but this is a more like specific thing to um, creating a YAML file, I think, inside of the test grid directory and seeing all of the jobs that this specific SIG cares about. But if we do a better job of, um, and we'll probably discuss this at the leadership summit, of actually like getting SIGs to associate themselves with all of these different jobs, we can auto-create a lot of these things instead of having them uh, handcrafted and curated. Um, uh, Velodrome, I just wanted to call out um, as an alternative view of showing, well, Maybe I can't call that out. That doesn't seem to be working right now. Maybe I can do submit queue. I wanted to show it as an alternative view of the submit queue. You can tell we're coming up to code freeze because uh, the lines that were green a couple days ago have started turning red. Um, so we're all in for a fun ride or maybe things are gonna be super smooth, I don't know. But I anticipate we should start um, watching this page a little more closely. Um, 
especially to sort of notice that the number of PRs sometimes seems to be precipitously getting bumped up or not. Um, this was definitely the queue draining after we unblocked the uh, quota issue that was holding up tests yesterday. Um, okay, I think that's most of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I also wanted to talk briefly about the two bots um, that SIG testing is, is in charge of in coordination with Garrett, uh, Garrett's fine work from uh, contributor experience. Um, much like Kubernetes has sort of a push and pull model for uh, accomplishing things, we have Munge GitHub, which sort of uh, pulls GitHub for things, and then we have Prowl, which has events pushed to it from GitHub. Um, so Munge GitHub recently just had a feature added to it where it swept through all of the issues that did not have any SIG labels associated with them and added a need SIG label um, somewhere here. It should have commented why it added the need SIG label in this case. I guess it didn't here. Uh, but if uh, you are a watcher on a number of issues, you probably noticed yesterday around 3.30 Pacific that uh, the bot started asking people to triage issues appropriately. The idea here is we, we anticipate that adding SIG labels to issues will encourage SIGs to actually do something about the issues associated with them. Um, so. This uh, probably, since it's tagged with area API and API server, might be associated with the uh, API machinery SIG or something to that effect. Um, so what are all the things that Munge GitHub can do? Uh, it uses things called Mungers. Um, so I apologize, this isn't like, we don't have a, a tremendous amount of documentation on, on all this, but for developers who are capable of reading code, each of these files corresponds to a single uh, munger that can do something for every issue or every pull request in a given repo. Um, what does the munger actually do? Well, let's take a look at an example config map that's used uh, for the submit queue that is deployed today for Kubernetes. And you can see that there are a variety of configuration options that are passed through to each of the mungers. Again, I would have to encourage you to read, read the code to understand what all of these do. But some of them are a little self-explanatory, like these are all of the jobs that must pass. You know, when you go to your pull requests and see the list of required jobs in that context, these are all the jobs that have to pass. Um, if you want to see which particular mungers this, uh, this deployment is using against the Kubernetes repo, you can see the list here, it's comma separated, order matters, that's why blunderbuss comes first. Um, uh, you can see where it's uh, dumping data, uh, so on and so forth. Um, okay, so Prow, same thing. Uh, what can it do? Uh, Prow basically, instead of having mungers, has plugins. In the plugin directory, each of these directories corresponds to a plugin that can accomplish something. So, for example, the work that Garrett's been doing is probably in the label plugin, which can respond to certain commands and then add either area, priority, kind, or SIG labels, right? Um, how can I determine the, the plugin that everybody probably most cares about? Aside from the labeling plugin, is the trigger plugin because this is the one that actually, given a GitHub event, goes off and creates a job which ultimately gets turned into a pod which gets run on a Kubernetes cluster. Or the job ends up getting, uh, ends up corresponding to something that goes and triggers a Jenkins job. Um, so, what does Prow actually do? I can take a look at the plugins file to see which plugins are activated for which repos or which organizations. So you can see, for example, the, uh, the thing that lets me do slash LGTM is active for any single repository in the Kubernetes organization, as well as the plugin that's responsible for looking for whether or not somebody is CNCF, CLA approved. Um, it allows people to assign issues. Um, you can also, you'll notice the trigger plugin is not turned on for all repos in the Kubernetes org, but it's enabled specifically for certain repos. Um, the other plug, the other configuration file of interest is this config.yaml file. This is used principally by the trigger plugin, and this is the thing that defines for a given repo, what are the jobs that I care about for that repo, as well as a variety of options to configure that job. Things that folks might be interested in are what are the commands I can use to comment in a given GitHub issue to ask the bot to rerun just this specific job. Um, 
minor point of interest, the things here that look um, pretty small end up corresponding to a Jenkins job somewhere. Um, things that are a little bit larger, this looks uh, a little bit more like a, a pod spec, right? This actually ends up corresponding to a pod that gets run on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, this is a symbol of us really trying to move away from Jenkins and more towards Kubernetes native testing. Um, finally, both prow and munge GitHub respond to commands. I was alluding to like the label command earlier. Uh, this is the web page you can go to that we keep up to date with all of the latest and greatest commands um, that both of the bots support. So you can see the assign command is handled by prow while the approve command is handled by Munch GitHub for historical reasons that I can't quite explain just yet. Um, another way of getting to these is on any arbitrary pull request where a bot tells you to do something or gives you some information. Yeah, you'll generally notice that there is a details section here. You can click that and you can see the bot tells you, uh, excuse me, uh, that the commands are available, sorry, that the command, I understand the commands that are listed here. You can click that. That'll take you to the same page. Uh, it'll also tell you, uh, generally speaking, what the flow for a pull request is. If you have a question about why your PR is stuck, uh, there was recently some work done on unifying a number of pull request docs into this single doc, and I think it's gotten greatly improved. Um, uh, this sort of comment, uh, links to the commands are also available in the bot that, uh, excuse me, not yet, but with the PR that uh, was merged recently, I believe later incantations of Munch GitHub now comment, uh, the a link to commands on the approval comments here. Um, let's see, I think that's basically all I had. So I apologize for the super disorganized whirlwind nature of all of that. Um, Eric Feta, uh, co-organizer of SIG testing, will be giving a presentation at SIG testing next week. Again, that's Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, where he'll be walking through what is Prow uh, with actual diagrams and boxes and arrows, and then further describing once Prow actually kicks off a pod, what happens inside of that pod to spin up a Kubernetes cluster, uh, run tests against it, so on and so forth. Um, like I was alluding earlier, we really care deeply about getting SIGs owners, uh, turning SIGs into owners of jobs so that we can start getting some more accountability when random jobs fail. Um, and we hope to start tying that to an automated uh, SLA for flakiness. You may have noticed that Eric uh, did not send out his carefully slow roasted and artisanally crafted reports on the greatest hits for flakes and test failures last week. Um, and, you know, to me, it was, a, it was something I really missed. I'd really like to see us um, automate that in the future after we've had a chance to look back and see whether that's had an effect on steering uh, failures down. That's all I've got. I see a couple things in the chat. I will stop sharing. Any questions? Thanks for adding the command cross-reference right into the comments. That's really awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say that as well. Um, is that page, that, uh, I couldn't quite read the font. Is that page in test infra, the one that lists all the commands? Yes, it's uh, test infra slash commands.md. Okay. Thanks. Like I said, generally, if, if you find the bots telling you to do something and there's not a link to that, um, please open an issue against the testing for repo because we're trying to make sure there had been some discussion, right, about having people like hit slash help and having the bot respond with commands. But the problem is then you might have a bunch of uh, spam of that all over issues and stuff. So we want to make sure that as we update the list of available commands that people organically know how to find it. Yeah, the solution seems good. Awesome, any other questions for Aaron? All right, thank you very much. Moving on to SIG UI with Dan. Hey guys, Dan Romline here. And so I'll try to share. All right, so updates in SIG UI. We've got a 2017 roadmap established finally, which is exciting to have. Uh, Dan Pike, thanks for helping out with that process. So you can feel free to check that out. That's mainly what we're going to be working on for the next few quarters. 161 is our most recent release, and in that we incorporated global search. 
So I can look for a variety of different resources. Oh, and I might have actually shut down my Minikube instance. All right, so well, anyway, global search is running. Um, I think I have a screenshot here. Now we have filtering per card, per resource, as well as, sorry, so sorting, as well as filtering per resource. And we've aligned our navigation to the API docs. So a couple slight changes in ordering. Now things are alphabetical. And going forward, we're going to try to be consistent with API docs, which I think will help clarify things for people. Um, looking ahead to 1.7, as Janos very generously demoed, we should have exec in the pod. I didn't realize code freeze was today. I'm not sure if that's going to affect that or not, but that's the hope is to get the exec into pod functionality into 1.7. We've got some bug fixes around uh, issues that arose in 1.6.1 with um, access control and that kind of breaking pages. If you didn't have full access control, then then tried to view one resource, then the whole page would crash. Um, and then any breaking changes that come up in the main Kubernetes project. We're also working on role-based access control that's in progress, but isn't functional yet. And we're putting together an integrations page so that we have a place in dashboard to put things like weave scope or third-party resources kind of in their own section on dashboard. And that is most of my updates. Does anyone have any questions? So you mentioned the 2017 roadmap. Is, is there anything specific or exciting that's coming up in 1.8, given that 1.7 is closing today, give or take? Right, great question. I don't know what our plans, what the next big ticket items would be. I, I can look into that. That's fine. Any other questions for Dan? I have a quick question. Is it is it possible to like we're moving towards a model of plugins for the servers generally? Is it is it possible to inject and how would I go about injecting things into the the main Kubernetes UI? That's a great question. There's been discussion around going to more of a plugin based model, and I'm not sure what the current status of that is, but I can get back to you on that. What, what was your name? Yes. Justin Scope stuff working then. Okay, just sorry, say that again. How was the Weave Scope stuff working then? That's just through an iframe. Okay, so there's like there's specific code going into the open source UI for Weave Scope. Yes, I believe so. All right. Yeah. I mean this seems like we're going down the same path that we went down for cloud providers <laughs> if we go down that path. So something to think about. Mm. Any other questions? All right, I'm just going to write that down. I should investigate plugin approach question mark. Sound good? <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, moving on to some announcements. Lucas and or Joseph, are you here? I didn't see either of them. There is a proposal that they're looking for comments on, and it's linked off of the doc. It's another way that we might be able to activate uh, contributors within the community. And I think I saw, no, I know I saw Ryan on here earlier and I wanted to give a plug for uh, Kate's port and getting people to take a peek at that as well as a fun way to interact with um, Kubernetes and our project. Yeah, I think just by signing up the Kate's port I was able to earn a whole bunch of internet points doing, doing a bunch of stuff, but it does mail me regularly and I'm finding a bunch of things that I wouldn't have found organically. So I highly encourage you to check it out if you haven't yet already. Um, any other issues then or last minute agenda items that anyone wants to bring up before we close out early? Uh, I was going to, 
bring this up in person with folks at the Leadership Summit, but I'll just throw it out to the broader community as well. I'm finding that the how Kubernetes is actually built is a bit of a gap right now as far as SIG ownership. And I was going to propose that maybe SIG release um, take those sorts of things on. So um, two examples I'm thinking of specifically are who owns the Hypercube binary and image and all that stuff, and who's in charge of making sure that Kubernetes compiles correctly across all architectures. Um, I had a discussion about the all architecture stuff spill over into the SIG testing channel, which didn't quite seem like the right place for it. Turns out the maximum integer kind of overflows on certain architectures. Um, and Joe, I see you have turned on your camera because I've mentioned Hypercube and uh, it's, it's not like it's a bad thing. It's, it's a thing that people find useful. I want to make sure that it finds a home. And, no, I, and I was going to actually say, I think SIG release is probably the right place to engage in this stuff because there is, you know, and it's a little bit sort of slow rolling, but there is a lot of talk around how do we build releases? How do we do packaging across different types of packaging? I would consider the container image as being part of that. That brings in some of the build stuff, which is that part of SIG release or not? I think we've had discussions around that. Um, I, I unfortunately haven't been able to attend though, that SIG. Is there somebody up, you know, on here who can speak to that? To my knowledge, that SIG has not held a meeting yet, which was going to yeah. sort of be my next question. And it could be that everybody who's in charge of that is at CoreOS Fest right now. So I, I assume the more productive discussion will happen in person. I just wanted to throw it out there to the broader community in case anybody's like, no, I want another SIG focused just on build. <laughs> No, I, I think whether it's build or release, I think those things are related. And I think that this is something that we have to get a handle on for sure. Sorry, Brian, you were going to say? Oh, yeah. I, this has been uh, near the top of my list of things that uh, need to find a home for a long time. I, we are trying to make sure everything on the project has a home in some SIG. Uh, the obvious candidates are SIG release, SIG testing, or uh, contributor experience. SIG release potentially makes sense. We should discuss it with them. Um, some other projects do have um, like CI working groups, which put build and test because most of their tests are unit tests, so it puts those two things together. That do doesn't necessarily make sense for us. But yeah, and I think it should be one of those three uh, as opposed to a new SIG. I think pretty much everyone is kind of head nodding that a new SIG is definitely not what we want, right? Certainly not if it fits well enough. Right, right. Okay. I'll just note that. Down. Especially since we're still defining SIG release. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other last minute question the governance docs, are those still open for comment or are we closed now? No, they are open until June fifteenth for comment, and we oh, would sorry, love I'm just June first. Never mind. Nope, June fifteenth. Um, we would love comments on them. There will be. Um, you mentioned the the leadership summit tomorrow. There will be a conversation in person there about them as well, um, and then we will be synthesizing a lot of this work and adjusting, tuning up what um, what our docs are currently as far as the process getting to a steering committee and the charter for the steering committee. Um, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback and then all of the rest of the docs really are suggestions or thought processes around what we've been discussing for the steering committee to figure out what to do with after that. So we have another two weeks roughly of uh, commenting time. So please feel free to go read them, ask questions, give comments, um, hold us accountable for what you think we may not have thought of, but I swear with, uh, with the number of days that we spent talking about this, uh, emailing about this uh, over time, we've, we've thought of a lot of things um, and we've, we've come to this fairly thoughtfully, but there are always new perspectives and we'd love to hear them. All right, and if we have no, no more agenda items, then thanks everyone for joining us. As always, uh, we, we'd like it when other people also MC. So if you're new in the Kubernetes community or you've never chaired one of these, we'd love to have you. Um, as well as we'd love to have volunteers helping take notes and that sort of thing and help 
help us wrangle cats. So with that, thank you everybody and we'll see you all next week. And thank you, George, for cat wrangling and taking notes today. You did double duty. Yes. Way to handle the long hair, George. <laughs> Thanks, RMS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs>